new driving theory test. Practice test number four. Question number one. In heavy motorway traffic, the vehicle behind you is following too closely. How can you lower the risk of a collision? A. Brake sharply. B. Increase your distance from the vehicle in front. C. Move onto the hard shoulder and stop. D. Switch on your hazard warning lights. Correct answer. B. Increase your distance from the vehicle in front. Explanation. On busy roads, traffic may still travel at high speeds despite being close together. Don't follow the vehicle in front too closely. If a driver behind seems to be pushing, you gradually increase your distance from the vehicle in front by slowing down gently. This will give you more space in front if you have to brake, and will reduce the risk of a collision involving several vehicles. 2. You see this sign ahead. What should you expect? A. The road will bend sharply to the left. B. The road will bend sharply to the right. C. The road will go steeply downhill. D. The road will go steeply uphill. Correct answer. A. The road will bend sharply to the left. Explanation. This sign indicates that the road will bend sharply to the left. Slow down in plenty of time and select the correct gear before you start to turn. Braking hard and late, while also sharply changing direction, is likely to cause a skid. 3. You're turning left into a side road. What hazard should you be especially aware of? A. One-way street. B. Parked vehicles. C. Pedestrians. D. Traffic congestion. Correct answer. C. Pedestrians. Explanation. Make sure that you've reduced your speed and are in the correct gear for the turn. Look into the road before you turn and always give way to any pedestrians who are crossing. 4. What does this sign mean? A. End of maximum speed. B. End of minimum speed. C. Maximum speed 30 miles per hour. D. Minimum speed 30 miles per hour. Correct answer. B. End of minimum speed. Explanation. The red slash through the sign indicates that the restriction has ended. In this case, the restriction was a minimum speed limit of 30 miles per hour. 5. Which sign means no entry? Correct answer. D. Explanation. Look for and obey traffic signs. Disobeying or not seeing a sign could be dangerous. It may also be an offense for which you could be prosecuted. 6. What does this sign mean? A. All lorries use the hard shoulder. B. Lane for heavy and slow vehicles. C. Leave the motorway at the next exit. D. Rest area for lorries. Correct answer. B. Lane for heavy and slow vehicles. Explanation. Where there's a long, steep, uphill gradient on a motorway, a crawler lane may be provided. This helps the traffic to flow by diverting the slower or heavy vehicles into a dedicated lane on the left. 7. What does 25 mean on this motorway sign? A. The distance to the nearest town. B. The number of the next junction. C. The route number of the road. D. The speed limit on the slip road. Correct answer. B. The number of the next junction. Explanation. Before you set out on your journey, use a road map to plan your route. When you see an advance warning of your junction, Make sure you get into the correct lane in plenty of time. Last minute harsh braking and cutting across lanes at speed is extremely hazardous. 8. You've broken down on a motorway. In which direction should you walk to find the nearest emergency telephone? A. Facing oncoming traffic. B. In the direction of the nearest exit. C. In the direction shown on the marker posts. D. With the traffic flow, correct answer, C in the direction shown on the marker posts. Explanation, along the hard shoulder there are marker posts at 100 meter intervals. These will direct you to the nearest emergency telephone. 9. When should you use hazard warning lights? A. When you leave your car at the roadside to visit a shop. B. 
when you need to park on the pavement. C. When you slow down quickly on a motorway because of a hazard ahead. D. When you wish to stop on double yellow lines. Correct answer. C. When you slow down quickly on a motorway because of a hazard ahead. Explanation. Hazard warning lights are fitted to all modern cars and some motorcycles. They should be used to warn other road users when your vehicle is causing a temporary obstruction, for example, after a collision or when it's broken down. Following drivers on a motorway of a hazard or obstruction ahead, they shouldn't be used as an excuse for dangerous or illegal parking. 10. What should you do when making a journey in foggy conditions? A. Avoid using dipped headlights. B. Follow other vehicles' tail lights closely. C. Keep two seconds behind the vehicle ahead. D. Leave plenty of time for your journey. Correct answer. D. Leave plenty of time for your journey. Explanation. If you're planning to make a journey when it's foggy, listen to the weather reports. If visibility is very poor, avoid making unnecessary journeys. If you do travel, Leave plenty of time, and if someone is waiting for you to arrive, let them know that your journey will take longer than normal. This will also take off any pressure you may feel to rush. 11. What does this white line along the center of the road mean? A. Bus lane marking. B. Give way warning. C. Hazard warning. D. Lane marking. Correct answer. C. Hazard warning. Explanation. The center of the road is usually marked by a broken white line, with lines that are shorter than the gaps. When the lines become longer than the gaps, this is a hazard warning line. Look well ahead for these, especially when you're planning to overtake or turn off. 12. A slow-moving lorry showing this sign is traveling in the middle lane of a three-lane motorway. How should you pass it? A. Approach with care and pass on the left of the lorry. B. Cautiously approach the lorry, then pass on either side. C. Don't pass the lorry and leave the motorway at the next exit. D. Use the right-hand lane and pass the lorry normally. Correct answer. A. Approach with care and pass on the left of the lorry. Explanation. This sign is found on slow-moving or stationary works vehicles. If you wish to overtake, do so on the left, as indicated. Be aware that there might be workmen in the area. 13. You're following a large vehicle. Why should you stay a safe distance behind it? A. You'll allow the driver to see you in their mirrors. B. You'll be able to corner more quickly. C. You'll help the large vehicle to stop more easily. D. You'll keep out of the wind better. Correct answer, A. You'll allow the driver to see you in their mirrors. Explanation, if you're following a large vehicle that is so close to it that you can't see its exterior mirrors, the driver won't be able to see you. Keeping well back will also allow you to see the road ahead by looking past on either side of the large vehicle. 14. What speed limit is often found in narrow residential streets? A. 20 miles per hour. B. 25 miles per hour. C. 35 miles per hour. D. 40 miles per hour. Correct answer. A. 20 miles per hour. Explanation. In some built-up areas, you may find the speed limit reduced to 20 miles per hour. Driving at a slower speed will help give you the time and space to see and deal safely with hazards such as pedestrians and other vulnerable road users. 15. In good conditions, what's the typical stopping distance at 70 miles per hour? A. 53 meters, 175 feet. B. 60 meters, 197 feet. C. 73 meters, 240 feet. D. 96 meters, 315 feet. Correct answer. D. 96 meters, 315 feet. Explanation. Note that this is the typical stopping distance. It will take at least this distance to think, break and stop in good conditions. In poor conditions, it will take much longer. 
16. Which of these is least likely to be affected by side winds? A. Cars. B. Cyclists. C. High-sided vehicles. D. Motorcyclists. Correct answer. A. Cars. Explanation. Although cars are the least likely to be affected, side winds can take anyone by surprise. This is most likely to happen after overtaking a large vehicle. When passing gaps between hedges or buildings, and on exposed sections of road. 17. What does this sign mean? A. Direction to bus and poach park. B. Direction to park and ride car park. C. No parking for buses or coaches. D. Parking area for cars and coaches. Correct answer. B. Direction to park and ride car park. Explanation. To ease the congestion in town centers. Some cities and towns provide park and ride schemes. These allow you to park in a designated area and ride by bus into the center. Park and ride schemes are usually cheaper and easier than car parking in the town center. 18. At a railway level crossing, the red lights continue to flash after a train has gone by. What should you do? A. Alert drivers behind you. B. Phone the signal operator. C. Proceed with caution. D. Wait. Correct answer. D. Wait. Explanation. You must always obey red flashing stop lights. If a train passes but the lights continue to flash, another train will be passing soon. Cross only when the lights go off and the barriers open. 19. It can be helpful to plan your route before starting a journey. Why should you also plan an alternative route? A. You may find you have to pay a congestion charge. B. You may get held up by a tractor. C. Your maps may have different scales. D. Your original route may be blocked. Correct answer. D. Your original route may be blocked. Explanation. It can be frustrating and worrying to find your planned route is blocked by roadworks or diversions. If you've planned an alternative, you'll feel less stressed and more able to concentrate fully on your driving or riding. If your original route is mostly on motorways, it's a good idea to plan an alternative using non-motorway roads. Always carry a map with you just in case you need to refer to it. 20. You're making an appointment and will have to travel a long distance. How should you plan for the journey? A. Allow plenty of time for the trip. B. Avoid roads with the national speed limit. C. Plan to travel at busy times. D. Prevent other drivers from overtaking. Correct answer. A. Allow plenty of time for the trip. Explanation. Always allow plenty of time for your journey in case of unforeseen problems. Anything can happen, for example, punctures, breakdowns, road closures, diversions and delays. You'll feel less stressed and less inclined to take risks if you aren't pushed for time. 21. What does this signal from a police officer mean to oncoming traffic? A. Go ahead. B. Stop. C. Turn left. D. Turn right. Correct answer. B. Stop. Explanation. Police officers may need to direct traffic, for example, at a junction where the traffic lights have broken down. Check your copy of the highway code for the signals that they use. 22. You're on a three-lane motorway. A red cross is showing above the hard shoulder and mandatory speed limits above all other lanes. What does this mean? A. The hard shoulder can be used as a normal running lane. B. The hard shoulder can be used as a rest area if you feel tired. C. The hard shoulder has a speed limit of 50 miles per hour. D. The hard shoulder is for emergency or breakdown use only. Correct answer. D. The hard shoulder is for emergency or breakdown use only. Explanation. A red cross above the hard shoulder shows that it's closed as a running lane and should only be used for emergencies or breakdowns. On a smart motorway. The hard shoulder may be used as a running lane at busy times. 
This will be shown by a mandatory speed limit on the gantry above the hard shoulder. 23. Following a collision, someone has suffered a burn. The burn needs to be cooled. What's the shortest time it should be cooled for? A. 10 minutes. B. 15 minutes. C. 20 minutes. D. 5 minutes. Correct answer. A. 10 minutes. Explanation. Check the casualty for shock and, if possible, try to cool the burn for at least 10 minutes. Use a clean, cool, non-toxic liquid, preferably water. 24. In which of these circumstances must you show your insurance certificate? A. When a police officer asks you for it. B. When buying or selling a vehicle. C. When having an MOT inspection. D. When making a sawn. Correct answer. A. When a police officer asks you for it. Explanation. You must produce a valid insurance certificate when requested by a police officer. If you can't do this immediately, you may be asked to take it to a police station. Other documents you may be asked to produce are your driving license and the vehicle's MOT certificate. 25. Why is it more difficult to overtake a large vehicle than a car? A. It will be fitted with a speed limiter. B. It will be slow climbing hills. C. It will have air brakes. D. It will take longer to pass one. Correct answer. D. It will take longer to pass one. Explanation. Depending on relative speed, it will usually take you longer to pass a lorry than other vehicles. Hazards to watch for include oncoming traffic, junctions ahead, bends or dips that could restrict your view, and signs or road markings that prohibit overtaking. Make sure you can see that it's safe to complete the maneuver before you start to overtake. 26. You're traveling along a motorway and feel tired. Where should you stop to rest? A. At the nearest service area. B. On a slip road. C. On the central reservation. D. On the hard shoulder. Correct answer. A. At the nearest service area. Explanation. If you feel tired, stop at the nearest service area. If that's too far away, leave the motorway at the next exit and find a safe place to stop. You mustn't stop on the carriageway or hard shoulder of a motorway except in an emergency, when in a traffic queue. Or when signaled to do so by a police officer, a traffic officer or traffic signals. Plan your journey so that you have regular rest stops. 27. What should you do when passing sheep on a road? A. Briefly sound your horn. B. Go very slowly. C. Herd them to the side of the road. D. Pass quickly but quietly. Correct answer. B. Go very slowly. Explanation. Slow down and be ready to stop if you see animals in the road ahead. Animals are easily frightened by noise and vehicles passing too close to them. Stop if signal to do so by the person in charge. 28. What does this road marking mean? A. It's safe to overtake. B. Overtaking traffic should move back to the left. C. The road bends to the left. D. Traffic should use the hard shoulder. Correct answer. B. Overtaking traffic should move back to the left. Explanation. In this picture, the road marking shows that overtaking drivers or riders need to return to the left before they reach the hatch markings ahead. The hatch markings are designed to separate opposing streams of traffic. For example, approaching some junctions or dual carriageways. 29. At an incident, someone is suffering from severe burns. What should you do to help them? A. Apply lotions to the injury. B. Burst any blisters. C. Douse the burns with clean, cool, non-toxic liquid. D. Remove anything sticking to the burns. Correct answer. C. Douse the burns with clean, cool, non-toxic liquid. Explanation. Your priority is to cool the burns with a clean, cool, non-toxic liquid, preferably water. Its coolness will help take the heat out of the burns and relieve the pain. Keep the wound doused for at least 10 minutes.
If blisters appear, don't attempt to burst them, as this could lead to infection. 30. At night, you see a pedestrian wearing reflective clothing and carrying a bright red light. What does this mean? A. You're approaching a slow-moving vehicle. B. You're approaching a traffic danger spot. C. You're approaching an organized walk. D. You're approaching roadworks. Correct answer. C. You're approaching an organized walk. Explanation. The people on the walk should be keeping to the left. But don't assume this. Pass carefully, making sure you have time to do so safely. Be aware that the pedestrians have their backs to you and may not know that you're there. 31. You're driving along this road. The red van cuts in close in front of you. What should you do? A. Accelerate to get closer to the red van. B. Drop back to leave the correct separation distance. C. Flash your headlights several times. D. Give a long blast on the horn. Correct answer. B. Drop back to leave the correct separation distance. Explanation. There are times when other drivers make incorrect or ill-judged decisions. Be tolerant and try not to retaliate or react aggressively. Always consider the safety of other road users, your passengers and yourself. 32. What's the main cause of brake fade? A. Air in the brake fluid. B. Oil on the brakes. C. The brakes out of adjustment. D. The brakes are overheating. Correct answer. D. The brakes are overheating. Explanation. Brakes can overheat and lose efficiency when they're used continually, such as on a long, steep, downhill stretch of road. Using a lower gear when you drive downhill can help prevent the vehicle from gaining speed. 33. You're testing your suspension. You notice that your vehicle keeps bouncing when you press down on the front wing. What does this mean? A. Steering wheel not located centrally. B. Tires underinflated. C. Worn shock absorbers. D. Worn tires. Correct answer. C. Worn shock absorbers. Explanation. If you find that your vehicle bounces as you drive around a corner or bend in the road, the shock absorbers might be worn. Press down on the front wing and, if the vehicle continues to bounce, take it to be checked by a qualified mechanic. 34. You've been convicted of driving while unfit through drink or drugs. You'll find this is likely to cause the cost of one of the following to rise considerably. Which one? A. Driving license. B. Insurance premiums. C. Road fund license. D. Vehicle test certificate. Correct answer, the insurance premiums. Explanation, you've shown that you're a risk to yourself and others on the road. For this reason, insurance companies may charge you a higher premium. 35. You're driving on a long journey. What can you do to help prevent tiredness? A. Complete a journey without stopping. B. Eat a large meal before driving. C. Play loud music in the car. D. Take regular refreshment breaks. Correct answer. D. Take regular refreshment breaks. Explanation. Long distance driving can be boring. This coupled with a stuffy, warm vehicle can make you feel tired and sleepy. Make sure you take rest breaks to help you stay awake and alert. Stop in a safe place before you get to the stage of fighting sleep. 36. You're driving over a level crossing. The warning lights come on and a bell rings. What should you do? A. Get everyone out of the vehicle immediately. B. Keep going and clear the crossing. C. Stop and reverse back to clear the crossing. D. Stop immediately and use your hazard warning lights. Correct answer. B. Keep going and clear the crossing. Explanation. Keep going. Don't stop on the crossing. If the amber warning lights come on as you're approaching the crossing, you must stop unless it's unsafe to do so. Red flashing lights together with an audible signal mean you must stop. 37. You're on a busy main road and find that you're traveling in the wrong direction. What should you do? A. Make a three-point turn in the main road. 
B. Make a U-turn in the main road. C. Turn around on a side road. D. Turn into a side road on the right and reverse into the main road. Correct answer. C. Turn around on a side road. Explanation. Don't turn around in a busy street or reverse from a side road into a main road. Find a quiet side road and choose a place where you won't obstruct an entrance or exit. Look out for pedestrians and cyclists as well as other traffic. 38. When may front fog lights be used? A. When an audible warning device is used. B. When they aren't as bright as the headlights. C. When they're fitted above the bumper. D. When visibility is seriously reduced. Correct answer. D. When visibility is seriously reduced. Explanation. Your fog lights must only be used when visibility is reduced to 100 meters, 328 feet, or less. You need to be familiar with the layout of your dashboard so you're aware if your fog lights have been switched on in error, or you've forgotten to switch them off. 39. What would suggest you're driving on ice? A. There's less engine noise. B. There's less transmission noise. C. There's less tire noise. D. There's less wind noise. Correct answer. C. There's less tire noise. Explanation. Drive extremely carefully when the roads are icy. When traveling on ice, tires make virtually no noise and the steering feels light and unresponsive. In icy conditions, be very gentle when braking, accelerating and steering. 40. Which of the following shouldn't be kept in your vehicle? A. The car dealer's details. B. The owner's manual. C. The service record. D. The vehicle registration document. Correct answer. D. The vehicle registration document. Explanation. Never leave the vehicle registration document inside your car. This document would help a thief to dispose of your car more easily. 41. You've just been overtaken by this motorcyclist, who has cut in sharply. What should you do? A. Brake firmly. B. Flash your lights. C. Keep a safe gap. D. Sound the horn. Correct answer. C. Keep a safe gap. Explanation. If another vehicle cuts in sharply, ease off the accelerator and drop back to allow a safe separation distance. Try not to overreact by braking sharply or swerving, as you could lose control. If vehicles behind you are too close or unprepared, it could lead to a crash. 42. You're about to drive home. You can't find the glasses you need to wear. What should you do? A. Borrow a friend's glasses and use those. B. Drive home at night, so that the lights will help you. C. Drive home slowly, keeping to quiet roads. D. Find a way of getting home without driving. Correct answer. D. Find a way of getting home without driving. Explanation. If you need to wear glasses for driving, it's illegal to drive without them. You must be able to see clearly when you're driving. 43. You're driving on a well-lit motorway on a clear night. What must you do? A. Use front fog lights. B. Use only your side lights. C. Use rear fog lights. D. Use your headlights. Correct answer. D. Use your headlights. Explanation. If you're driving on a motorway at night or in poor visibility, you must always use your headlights. Even if the road is well lit. Other road users must be able to see you, but you should avoid causing dazzle. 44. You're driving through a tunnel and the traffic is flowing normally. What should you do? A. Use dipped headlights. B. Use front spotlights. C. Use parking lights. D. Use rear fog lights. Correct answer. A. Use dipped headlights. Explanation. Before entering a tunnel. You should switch on your dipped headlights, as this will allow you to see and be seen. In many tunnels, it's a legal requirement. Don't wear sunglasses while driving in a tunnel. You may wish to tune your radio to a local channel for traffic information.
45. What's the most important reason for having a properly adjusted head restraint? A. To help you avoid neck injury. B. To help you maintain your driving position. C. To help you relax. D. To make you more comfortable. Correct answer. A. To help you avoid neck injury. Explanation. In a collision. Rapid deceleration will violently throw vehicle occupants forward and then backwards as the vehicle stops. Seat belts and airbags protect occupants against the forward movement. Head restraints should be adjusted so they give maximum protection to the head and neck during the backward movement. 46. What can people who live or work in towns and cities do to help reduce urban pollution levels? A. Drive more quickly. B. Drive short journeys. C. Over rev in a low gear. D. Walk or cycle. Correct answer. D. Walk or cycle. Explanation. Using a vehicle for short journeys means the engine doesn't have time to reach its normal operating temperature. When an engine is running below its normal operating temperature, it produces increased amounts of pollution. Walking and cycling don't create pollution and have health benefits as well. 47. You're driving towards a zebra crossing. A person in a wheelchair is waiting to cross. What should you do? A. Be prepared to stop. B. Continue on your way. C. Wave to the person to cross. D. Wave to the person to wait. Correct answer. A. Be prepared to stop. Explanation. You should slow down and be prepared to stop as you would for an able-bodied person. Don't wave them across, as other traffic may not stop. 48. You're towing a caravan. Which is the safest type of rear-view mirror to use? A. Extended arm side mirrors. B. Interior wide-angle mirror. C. Ordinary door mirrors. D. Ordinary interior mirror. Correct answer, or extended arm side mirror. Explanation, towing a large trailer or caravan can greatly reduce your view of the road behind. You may need to fit extended arm side mirrors so that you can see clearly behind and down both sides of the caravan or trailer. 49. What must you have to park in a disabled space? A. A blue badge. B. A wheelchair. C. An adapted vehicle. D. An advanced driver certificate. Correct answer. A. A blue badge. Explanation. Don't park in a space reserved for disabled people unless you or your passenger are a disabled badge holder. The badge must be displayed in your vehicle. In the bottom left-hand corner of the windscreen. 50. You lose control of your car and damage a garden wall. No one is around. What must you do? A. Find someone in the area to tell them about it immediately. B. Go back to tell the house owner the next day. C. Report the incident to the police within 24 hours. D. Report the incident to your insurance company when you get home. Correct answer. C. Report the incident to the police within 24 hours. Explanation. If the property owner isn't available at the time. You must inform the police about the incident. This should be done as soon as possible, and in any case within 24 hours.